Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Anna and I'm a little bit spooky. Today I'm a little bronzy and a little glowy, but we got some summer vibes going with the makeup, but that's not why you're here. You are here for only things I love video. This is a true just favorites video of things that I have been loving lately. We're going to talk about makeup, we're going to talk about lifestyle, we're going to talk about media, uh, skincare, bath, just if I consume it in any way, it's on this list and we're gonna go through it. Let's go ahead and just get into this video. But before you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below, let me know some things that you have been loving lately. And let's just have a nice little love fest in the comments and talk about all the good because Lord knows we all need lots of good. So yeah, let's get to this video. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna start with makeup because that's my favorite topic ever and I just enjoy talking about makeup so yeah first thing i want to talk about are the jason Wu lipsticks these are the hot fluff matte lipsticks that you can use on your cheeks your eyes your lips i am obsessed with them i have the shade eclair which i'm wearing on my lips today and i have the shade cannoli which is a beautiful burnt kind of dark orangey peach type of shade or something kind of uh very muted about these shades even though they're kind of a coral it's a incredibly muted almost pumpkin shade and I love it. It's not super vibrant. There's something kind of smoky almost about it. And it is just a gorgeous, gorgeous color. And the Shady Claire is a muted peach, which is what is on my lips today. Both of these are absolutely stunning. They look beautiful on the lips and the cheeks. They wear beautifully on the cheeks. If you don't have oily lids, they are fantastic for eyeshadow. They do crease on me, however, because I have very oily lids. But I just have been reaching for these two shades constantly and I'm gonna need the whole collection from Jason Wu because I love these so much. They're just my, my favorite lipsticks right now. Moving on to some highlighters. I have been loving the Jaclyn Hill Sparks Highlighter from Jaclyn Cosmetics. I am loving this one. It has a really pretty yellowy, almost green flash within it. Her shift is very, very yellow golden beautiful on fair skin. It's kind of a unique tone. It's not quite green, but it's very, very yellow. And I think it is so beautiful with a warm green eyeshadow look. It's very pretty. It makes a beautiful inner corner highlight. The formula is so smooth and just, it's a good one. So I've just been really loving that and been reaching for it so consistently since I got it, especially because you know I wear a lot of green eyeshadows. It, this is the kind of it just complements so well because I love golds and greens on my eyeballs and this is just a lovely way to tie that into the cheek without casting a shadow or looking too deep on my face. This works so well on really fair skin tones. I am basically the shade of a, I wouldn't say uncooked chicken because I'm not quite that pink. I'm the shade of a Popeye's chicken breast after you pull the skin off. That's, that's my skin tone. Just once you rip into the chicken that's cooked, <laughs> just the pure white with some weird splotches in there sometimes. That's me. Uh, but yeah, this looks gorgeous on my skin. It doesn't have any dark cast or shadow. It just looks great and I'm obsessed with it. Formula is so smooth. It is very, very highlighting, very glowy, very strong highlight. But you can apply it with a light hand and get a softer application or you can really build it up and get that alien slut highlight as Teresa's dead would say. And that definitely has some alien slut, slut qualities to me. <laughs> the formula is beautiful and it's a very unique shade. The other highlight that I am just dying over lately is the Charlotte Silberry Film Star Bronze and Glow. The highlight side of this. I'm in love. I want just this highlighter. I want a full size of it. It is so pretty. It is what I'm wearing today. And it is just so smooth looking. It's radiant. It's not gonna look over the top and too metallic or anything like that. It's just very smooth, glowy, beautiful product. There's no glitter in it. There's no chunkiness. It is just so soft and so pretty and so skin-like. It would look beautiful on mature skin, any skin. It's a good one and the shade of it is so, so pretty. It's a true light champagne type of shade that works on my pale skin so that also makes me very happy it doesn't cast a shadow and still has a nice bit of warmth in there without looking yellow like the Jaclyn Hill one or too golden it's just a very nice kind of neutral champagne that is gorgeous and it doesn't look icy either 
um, I think my, it just looks so pretty on the skin. Or it has a very similar appearance to the Flawless Filter on the skin, that kind of just soft, kind of wet glow that looks very natural, kind of lit, with her, lit from within, healthy glow. It doesn't look like makeup. And you can build it up though and get quite an impact from it. And it's just gorgeous. I love it, love it, love it. And this also brings me over into bronzers. I have been obsessed with bronzers this summer. This is a new thing for me. I was not a bronzer girl because I just didn't think many worked for me. I think I've talked about this a lot, but I tried Nars Laguna and it worked for me and I was really surprised. So I started branching out trying different bronzers and contour products and have found so many beautiful ones that I'm loving in tones and shades that I didn't think would work on me but they do and I've just been having a lot of fun with that. Leading into that is the contour or sculpt side of this palette. Loving it. This is a little bit more of a pinky bronzer and it's really gorgeous. It's unique to my collection. I don't have a shade quite like this. This one you can truly get that kind of sculpted bronzer look like the brontour type of style like because this is has a warmth in it where you still get a little bit of a bronzing vibe from it but it also has enough shadowiness in it to sculpt at the same time i find it to be a very versatile beautiful product i think it is great for fair fair light um light medium skin tones if you're deeper than that i don't think this is gonna play well for you but on me this one has just been absolutely beautiful and i'm kicking myself that i didn't buy it sooner because it's gorgeous and i'm just loving it loving it it's so pretty and i just think it's a beautiful piece to have this is the mini size by the way get the mini i do have a review of that i will link it below where i go into a little bit more detail and application and all that so and speaking of bronzers the maybelline city bronzer in the shade 100 i think mine is mislabeled it says 200 but this is definitely not 200 this is 100 it's very light this was the lightest one on the display as well and when i compare it online to pictures this is a this is the lightest one. I just think mine somehow just mislabeled because there's no way this is the, the deeper of the shades. This is a, a beautiful, unique tone also to my collection because it is a very yellow undertone bronzer. And there's something about it I think is very pretty and looks really nice on my skin as well. I'm truly neutral. I can use a more ready type of bronzer or I can use a more yellowy bronzer or just a neutral one. It, it all kind of works. That's the perk of being a very neutral skin tone. I just have rosacea. That's one of those redness in my skin. And I'm hot, so sometimes I get a little red. But anyway, this bronzer is beautiful, beautiful formula. It's very soft. Now, it does have a lot of kick up when you go into the pan. It is kind of dusty. But I really like the tone of this. And I've been having fun using it with a very light hand on days when I don't have any self-tan on. And I'm just very fair looking. This is one I was reaching for early kind of late spring early summer before I got any color at all to my skin which isn't much and I have self tan on today but yeah I've, I've really been liking this one and if you're looking for a good drugstore dupe of the Patrick Ta she statuesque bronzer shade this is a great dupe of that formula wise not quite on par but color wise pretty damn close this one's maybe a hair more yellow but not enough that you're gonna notice it on the skin and that brings us to the Patrick Ta she statuesque face palette contour bronze palette love it love it to pieces this one again is another one unique to my collection the bronzer in here is so freaking gorgeous it has a radiant lit from within type of finish to it it looks like skin and finish like it is such a subtle satin finish just beautiful beautiful it's not shimmery it's not illuminating it's not glowy it is just that skin like sheen to it and it is gorgeous and the contour in here is just the perfect shade, especially on my skin tone right now when I have a little bit of self tan on or without. A bit more of a cooler undertone, undertone to it. It is very just neutral. It's warmer than any of the contours in my collection, but still just beautiful, beautiful, soft, creamy formula. Blends like an absolute dream. Very user friendly. And the bronzer is so gentle, yet buildable, very buildable products. So. You, they're kind of almost just goof proof but they're gorgeous and I look forward to using them like I get excited to use them because they're just a lovely experience to use all around enjoying this so much that brings me over to blush and that is the Patrick Ta blush and do we know her this is the cream 
powder duo as well. Absolutely just a pleasure to use. I know the shade that I picked isn't the most unique shade, but this is a shade that works really well on me. To me, this gives me a little bit of a sun-kissed, almost sunburnt kind of look to my skin, which is very natural on me and fits with my skin tone. So I love that. And this powder blush is so pretty. It has the same formula as the bronzer where it has a very skin-like sheen and the cream portion will give you just a little bit of glow on the cheeks, but it's not tacky, it's not balmy, it's not, your hair's not gonna get caught in it, nothing like that. It like sets down and it is so beautiful, but stays almost vaguely luminous to where it truly looks like skin and a little bit of a gloss. It is gorgeous, gorgeous product, very unique formula. I haven't found anything to replicate the formula of this at all so far. Uh, I do have some dupes color-wise, which will be in my review of this. I will link that in the eye because I did review this product as well as the bronzer product and really went into some detail about them and listed some dupes. But I've just really, really been into complexion products lately like that, like uh, blushes and bronzers and just having fun with that and experimenting and trying new shades because I have been so kind of stuck in a bubble thinking I can't use these shades. I'm just too pale. Well, you gotta branch out and try things, see if they work for you. So here we are. <laughs> All right, and I have three palettes to talk about. The first is from Rebel Rouge Labs. This is the Gods and Monsters palette. So, so beautiful. This is the most dreamy grunge summer palette. I mean, does this not just scream spring, summer, grungy girl vibes? A little bit of a vintage 70s retro feel in here, late 60s. Uh, a little bit of Marie Antoinette, a little bit of Gucci, a little bit of Lana Del Rey. This is gorgeous. I am in love with this palette. I'll link my uh, video using it above and I will be doing some more looks with it. So keep your eyes peeled because it is just so dang pretty. And I really enjoy this color story so much. It, it's breaking me out of my comfort zone while having some fun. And it's just really unique to my collection for sure. And I love it. And I think Ripple Rouge Labs is a lovely company as well. Next is the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. This was a hefty investment for me and I was very apprehensive because it's a lot of money and I was a little nervous going in, but my god, my, this blew my mind, this palette right here. The formulas are so, so amazing. This is, has to be one of the best quality eyeshadow palettes I've ever used. It's worth the money. It's worth the money. The cream to powders. Oh my God, they're so good. There's the pigmentation here is gorgeous. The opacity, the, the color payoff, all of that is there. The shades are there. This is a grunge girl dream palette, a high end grunge girl dream, the bougie grunge girl. This is it. And I have loved every look I've done with this so far. It has just been an absolute dream to work with. So easy, such an effortless palette to have these types of shades, like these blues and greens that aren't typically the easiest shades to work with. So easy, so easy. And trust me, there's gonna be plenty, plenty, plenty of looks coming with this palette because I'm having so much fun with it. And yeah, I will link my first impression of the palette above. But I just want to reach for it constantly. I have to make myself use other palettes because I'm like, girl, we can't do every look with the Natasha Denona. Now you gotta use your other stuff too. And last palette I want to talk about is the Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen palette with Tarte. This is a super old palette. Been out forever, but my friend Chandra got it for me a while back. She saw my tag video where I said that I had FOMO over one palette and it was this. I just had never got my hands on it, didn't have the money when it came out, and she found it on Macari from a seller that had swatched it once, maybe used it once. So like new, for sale, authentic palette, and uh, I sanitized it and used this bad boy in a makeup, a coffee and makeup video, and we sat down and talked about it, and just kind of a little bit of rem reminiscing about Graveyard Girl and some nostalgia, and just had a nice time playing with this and I'm just really just happy to have it. it. It's just a sentimental thing to me because I'm a huge fan of Graveyard Girl. I, I love Bunny and I just stabbed an eyeshadow with my ring. Cool. But I mean, it's so pretty. It's just a great neutral everyday reach for type of palette. I love the color story and I just love the whole vibe of this. 
this, I mean, come on. I love how much personality was in the design with this palette. How much, how much of Bunny came through with it. All right, next I have three skincare items I want to cover real quick. First is the Sunday Riley Lighthearted SPF. I love this one, especially if I'm wearing a little bit more moisturization. This is a great one to go for. This is an SPF 30 and it has blue light defense in it. So this is kind of the one I use on the day to day if I'm not leaving the house, staying home, kind of working from the computer, but I sit next to a window kind of thing. This is the one I like to go for because it's not the strongest SPF, but it is still effective. And I like the blue light defense because I do stare at screen a lot, a lot, a lot. And this one uh, does me some good there. And I just really like it. I think it's a beautiful product. It will leave a little bit of white cast on the skin, but still very beautiful, very it's lightweight, but still a little bit heavy-ish, but definitely on the lighter weight end of things. And it's just a very beautiful, very moisturizing. It just, it's great for just day-to-day -day around the house type of SPF. I'm somebody who burns quite easily, so I need all the SPF at all times. The next SPF I wanna talk about is the Dermalogica Dynamic Skin Recovery with SPF 50. This one is amazing for under makeup and going out and about because it is the lightest weight feeling SPF I've ever felt. It feels like a thin moisturizer and sinks into the skin and it feels like you just moisturize. It doesn't feel like you put on SPF. It doesn't have any of that greasiness, that heaviness, none of that. It is so incredibly beautiful on the skin. It wears amazingly under makeup without feeling heavy at all. Like I'm so impressed with this formula and I love that it's an SPF 50. So I like to use this one when I'm leaving the house and definitely under makeup it is beautiful. But this is my, my outdoors seeing the real world foundation or SPF because it has the SPF 50 in it and it has some other good skincare anti-aging ingredients, I do believe. So yeah, I, I enjoy this one quite a bit and highly recommend. It's a little expensive, but I think it's worth it. I also have a lot of sensitivities to SPFs. So when I find ones that work for me and don't give me hives, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. Next skincare thing and last is the Believe Beauty Hydrating Gel Cream. This is a beautiful moisturizer for summer. Oh my goodness. It's so lightweight. It sinks into the skin like a gel moisturizer but it goes on like a cream. So you get all this rich hydration off the bat and then it just sinks into the skin and feels so light and breathable and nice. You don't feel like you're being suffocated by your moisturizer, yet it has enough moisture in there to feel like it actually hydrates your skin. Whereas I find a lot of gel moisturizers just kind of don't feel like anything on my skin. Like I don't feel like they do anything. This one actually feels like it's doing something and it, wears so beautifully underneath the foundation also and it's just a beautiful beautiful product it's around five dollars at dollar general and it's amazing i've also tried a face mask from them that is lovely i'm really really impressed with the believe beauty skincare and i do want to do like a full face of believe beauty and like get some more of the skincare because this, this is such a lovely product this feels like an expensive skincare item like this feels like something from sunday riley it's so good. There's a slight fragrance, but it, it's very pleasant. Um, this is infused with squalane and rosehip. I mean, this, this feels like a high-end product. The packaging feels high-end, or not really high-end, but the packaging is very substantial of kind of luxe feeling. I'm, I'm so impressed, so impressed with Believe Beauty skincare. I, I need all the things from them now. I, I'm just, I need to go to the Dollar General. <laughs> Let's move on to a few YouTube channels that I've been enjoying. I really haven't watched any Netflix or um, Hulu TV shows or anything like that in the last year. So I can't really speak to anything on that front still. I still don't have a new show to talk about, but I have a couple of YouTube channels I want to talk about. Hung Van Gogh, the most relaxing makeup videos you'll ever watch and educational and just lovely, beautiful makeup. It is stuff you can try yourself and follow along with and replicate. And some of it's like really editorial and gorgeous, but he shows you how to do it yourself. And I think that is fantastic. His technique is so beautiful. What he does with his hands when he is doing the makeup is amazing. How he just goes in with his fingers 
and just blends things and the way he does skincare is so relaxing to watch like i want him to do this to me i'm gonna make my husband watch his videos so he can learn how to do the skincare like that so he can give me these gl glorious facial massages every day because he has nice good hands for that and i don't i have these little pointy angry hands they are not good for massaging but yeah <laughs> is that is that weird eh. but anyways his videos are just so relaxing and beautiful to watch like they're just very chill and calm but very satisfying at the same time and i learned a lot since i started watching him i find his technique to be a little bit different and unique and very you could tell his technique and it's i've, I've enjoyed them immensely and I think he's just such a lovely person. He seems very sweet and kind and I just love watching him <laughs> overall. Like they're very enjoyable videos. They're long. You can watch them, you put them on to go to bed and you just feel like you're relaxing and meditating and they're just, you get sucked in. It's just so calming. I love it. Now on the other end of the spectrum, a little bit there, cause it's not necessarily calming, but for some reason it makes me feel really calm. And that is Kirsty Minkin. She, used to be with Nao Nails. She is a nail artist, nail tech, and she does the most amazing acrylics. They're very elaborate, lots of bling, not my style at all for my fingers. Um, she does very unique shapes, but I freaking love watching her do nails. I love her personality. She makes me laugh. She is so funny. And when she has Faye as the client, it is the best fussy Faye. <laughs> um, Faye's very particular about her nails and she goes and like shops Kirsty's studio and she'll have a whole basket of stuff she wants done on her nails and it's just them two kind of aggravating each other and winding each other up and it's really kind of it's very funny but it's in good nature and watching Kirsty do nails though is just so enthralling like I just can't look away I love watching her videos from start to finish they're good like hour-long videos and I can just lay in bed and watch one and go to sleep even though like she's very high energy there's something still very relaxing about the videos like the music's pleasant and just the the commentary that's just flowing and you know nothing scripted I enjoy watching those so much and I just love watching her build nails I love watching the prep, the cuticle work, all of it to the end, to that top coat. I love it. And she has her own channel now and she can do what she wants and, you know, review products. I'm really enjoying watching her get to branch out and do her own things. And she has also launched her own brand, Bits for E-Files with little Swarovski crystals on the end. She has nail files that are COVID friendly that you can sanitize. It, it's really cool. And her little bits are so cool for the, uh, e-file i want her to do my nails so bad i would let her do fey nails on me like some crazy huge nails i would be down for it if she was the one doing it and last thing for like media and like fun stuff like that is playing sims 4. i think in a previous video i was talking about how it was maybe causing a depression spiral but no i was already in the depression spiral and um that just happened to be kind of a coincidence that i had downloaded had gotten the new computer where i could play sims at the same time so um, I'm still playing and I'm not having that unhealthiness with it like I was where I got a little bit obsessive and like I talked about in that video it's different now it's a little it's better but I'm just actually having fun with the game and playing it and not using it as an escape it is just a treat to play when I'm done working and it's it's very nice to sit down and just build houses that's what I really love to do is just build houses mostly in the game and decorate and download custom content and window shop it's kind of, I can get my shopping fix through the game. And, you know, I found like the balance with it. It's not consuming me anymore. <laughs> okay. I had to get to that little point where I'm like, okay, we need to, I'm getting bored with it basically is what the point that I needed. Cause I was getting a little bit too into it and just neglecting everything. But I'm, I was just in a really bad headspace as well, which has now improved dramatically. So, and we're back. I had to take a little break mid uh, filming there because I need to export footage and charge and uh, cook dinner. <laughs> uh, dinner as in it is six in the morning and I just made a amazing steaks. They were so good. Oh my goodness. They were amazing. Yeah. All right. So next little uh, segment 
in this video of things I love would be moving on over to lifestyle stuff. First thing is going to be redecorating. I have been having a blast redecorating my house and basically doing a shop my stash of my own home. I took all my decor and I moved it to the living room, just put it all out on the floor, sorted it into like piles of like things and took a laundry basket and just kind of filled it up with stuff that I wanted to put in what room and just literally like shopped my own collection of uh, home decor. And this time I prioritized the bedroom, which never gets prioritized. It's always the, the room that gets the things I'm less interested in and the, they always go in the living room, the things that I'm in love with. And I thought, you know what, this time I'm gonna do it the opposite and like really curate what's in the bedroom and make it a space that I'm really happy in and it's very cozy and a vibe I'm enjoying. So I'm going kind of a 70s bohemian-ish vibe in there. We got a little bit of antique, a little bit of retro, a lot of olive green, a couple pops of purple and various shades of green with like green glassware, like all vintage pieces. Um, I want to get some florals to put in there or some uh, fake greenery like uh, palm leaves or something to add. Um, we got a few snakes going on in there and uh, gold accents of course. So yeah, I'm, I'm really liking the way it's come together. I got the comforter of my dreams, which is a olive green velvet, crushed velvet comforter. I found it at Target and I lost my damn mind over it. And I love it so much. And then I got matching little cute pillows to put. And there's just kind of a lot more color going on in there than anywhere else in my house. But they're very 70s colors like there's a little bit of gold there's uh some blush pink mixed in like mustard shade and some elements of brown and the olive green is kind of the main color and i'm loving the way it's turned out and it's just really nice and another thing that i have absolutely been loving when it comes to fashion has been really bold gold chains like super bold i'll insert some pictures of what i'm talking about i'm so into them and big gold hoops with texture and like braiding going around it or twisties or some kind of a woven look i'm really into that and just kind of statement pieces that are still simple but they're like kind of large and in charge at the same time i'm really into that and i'm just really into oh big thunder nice gold chains and a herringbone chain has been one of my favorite accessories lately and then pairing the bold jewelry with a button down top. I've gotten one that's kind of a linen style button down with a mandarin collar and it's got like cap sleeves and it ties in the front. Love that little top so much and it's so cool and airy. It's perfect for summer and it's just very breezy. And then I have another one that's a little bit like more of a canvas material and with the three quarter length sleeves, it was great for spring. But it's a little more important now but i'm just really really into black simple button down tops and then i have just a plain button down top and i also have a red one but i haven't worn it yet the thing is i never wear makeup that goes with red maybe one day one day i'll wear that red one but i want to get some more button downs just basic ones i just love the way they look with a pair of jeans kind of like a little french tuck situation i think it's so so cute and chic and it's just one of my favorite kind of outfits to do is that with a pair of like booties or my mules or uh, some cute little chunky heel slides something like that I just I love that look and it's kind of a little bit minimal on the outfit but then you've got the bold statement necklace or something to balance it and make it a little bit something more and obviously the nails the nails have become a staple accessory for me lately I have been really enjoying going and getting my nails done. Me and my sister made that kind of a thing. We've gone back every two weeks to get our nails done since. I've almost filled up my little punch card from the salon. That's <laughs> how many times we've gone now. And I'm just really into the coffin shape. I don't know why, but I'm into it. And I've started uh, out with doing just very nude looking nails and very kind of short. Now I'm branching out, getting them a little longer. They were real long last week. And I kind of went back on the length because I was clumsy. But uh, yeah, I've been doing like matte black or just black and then an accent nail. Like today we have a little snake on 
it'll focus on it, but it'll focus on it. But we have a little snake on the accent finger. I think it's super cute. I found their decal box and they're gonna need to let me dig in that every time now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've gotten to know the people at the salon. They know my hands now and if you've been here a while, you know I got weird little hands and my nails grow kind of odd and hook down mostly, but they've kind of gotten to know my hands and the way my fingers grow or the way my nails grow and kind of talk to them about it. So they are now sculpting them a little more custom to my hand and not just slapping some tips on and calling it a day. They're like actually building platforms and like forming them up so that they fit my finger perfectly and to avoid like, you know, lifting and where my nail wants to curl away from the acrylic underneath. It's been a pretty good experience. I had like one kind of bad experience, like where the nails didn't hold up very well, but for the most part, I've really been enjoying going to this particular salon. They've been the best by far of any of the nail salons I've gone to. They do nail art. They do like the Kirsty Mink and nail art there. They do basic manicures, I do the pedicures, I do everything and everyone that works there is incredibly nice and they, oh, they are so busy because they have such a good reputation now and they are just booming and I'm so happy for them. It's just a lovely experience there and, and lastly, something I do want to mention is I have figured out how to use a curling iron, <laughs> like with a clamp curling iron, finally. I've had one for about a year that Conair had sent me and you know I could kind of use it and I got like a little bit of a curl but I really didn't know what I was doing. I watched so many tutorials and I practiced so much with it off and I finally have gotten the hang of it and I've been curling my hair in kind of a almost curtain bang 70s style curls um, <laughs> with the uh, curl and iron and I didn't do it today. Today this is just air dried hair with my natural texture. It needs a brushing. It's looking a little stringy now because I've been cooking and up and about doing stuff but that thing has been amazing. But I can just go to bed with my hair wet, wake up, throw some product in it, let it air dry the rest of the way if it's not fully dry. But I can go through with that thing and make my hair look really Kind of polished and finished looking. The only reason I didn't do it today is because it is so humid and so hot and rainy there was no point. <laughs> it, it would not have hung around much but I can do that and I can get the curls to last me a couple of days normally and I've just really been enjoying that. I'm getting rambly because I'm like really sleepy and ready for bed. I think that completes this edition of Only Things I Love and that is all for Only Things I Love. The third edition episode three yeah and uh, let me know down below some things that you have been loving they can be products makeup food lifestyle clothes whatever special moments with friends let me know down below and let's have a little love fest and talk all about it together uh yeah and that is all for today i will see you guys in the next one Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye now.